His nickname is Super Bad. Oh, I hope we don't lose everything. I'm gonna feel like a jackass. What kind of things do they do in an establishment called Silk? Pretty sure she gets a lot of comments about how effing hot she is, so she's probably tired of them. But... Well, you kind of had to suspect that that's what was going on anyway. There's no reason he shouldn't have qualified. I guess he did crash on it twice. Throwing yes. that at the wall and seeing if it sticks. This is the Talking Modal Podcast. <laughs> it's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone to the Talking Moto Podcast, presented by MB1 Suspensions. We can't thank them enough for everything that they do to help promote the podcast. So special thanks to everyone at MB1 for coming on board. We're coming at you live Monday, March 10th, 2014. Daytona Supercross Round 10 is in the books, and we'd like to thank everyone that's helping us out with the podcast. MB1 Suspensions, Fine Tune Motorsports, Moto Kazi, Hardline MX, Minnesota District 23, Spring Creek MX Park, The Bicycle Works, The Damn Bait Shop, The Open Mick Podcast, Team J-Law Racing, and SKD, this is Scott, and helping co-host the show we, and giving up part of their Monday nights, Jason and Jeff. Welcome, boys. And that's what one up? That's one hell of a intro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brett, take take, take a breath. Like a thousand words. <laughs> I need you a should have let one of us help you with it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that next week because I'm already tired. <laughs> Shut her down, boys. Let's go home. All right. We're in. We're good. That's it. Ugh. Just just have another beer. Let's do this. Wow. So a few names in that list there, Scotty, I heard. Yeah. Um probably new from last show is uh Matt with the Hardline MX. And that's uh, Matt. District twenty three was pretty excited. Uh maybe Jason can touch on that. He uh went to the meeting. It sounded like everything went pretty good. No. Yeah. And and then I think we were going to pick up uh, the Spring Creek MX Park. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, uh, <clears throat> Jason, what all happened at that meeting? Um, A whole lot of meeting type stuff. But, uh, no, I just kind of presented the podcast to the group there and to the board. And uh, everybody seems pretty cool. They seem on board with what we want to do. And uh, got a lot of really nice feedback. And hopefully... Uh, the people that were there that weren't listening or haven't listened before are listening tonight because I did my best to kind of share and promote the whole deal, and hopefully we got some new listeners, and you better not screw this up. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Sweet. Um, all right, what, uh, let's just jump right into it. What, uh, what did you guys think of the races? What'd you think? Oh, of... What's that? Uh, I didn't even watch him. Yes, you did. I watched you watch him. I didn't <laughs> I watch him. I, I was watching you watch him. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching you the whole time. Huh. Now this just got creepy. <laughs> just got creepy. I don't know. I mean, to me, kind of maybe typical Daytona. Uh, you know, lots of build up. Everybody expects, you know, a lot of great action and um, it just kind of seems like it's always a little bit of a letdown, but you know, like, like I was saying, I said to one of you guys, I know that, uh, you know, all season long, I've been saying I wanted to see a track where they could just go balls out and, and actually see some guys do some racing. Well, I guess we saw what happens when we have a track when they can just go balls out. Somebody just takes off and it's over before it even starts. It was, uh. It was a little bit of a snoozer, I thought. A little bit, a little bit. What do you think, Jeff? Um, yeah, I would agree. It's uh, I'm sick and tired of seeing tracks where the guys have to focus so hard on not falling down that they don't get to race. And I guess that's what you get at Daytona, but that's what we've got at a few rounds so far, and it's kind of frustrating as a fan who wants to see good racing. But I guess I mean, there's things going on behind the the lead you know i mean the championship's pretty much over at this point 
So there are hence some other the, things that hence kind of the focus tunage. On. What's that? Hence the song, It's the End of the World as We Know It. That's oh. why we did that. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, it's pretty much over, I think, for everyone. But, you know, I mean, there is seven races left, so something could happen to Villapoto, I suppose. But <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, anything can obviously happen, but I don't know. He just, that was a whole other side of him. And I guess what I'm kind of wondering is, is that a preview to outdoors? You know, is that enough of a difference in tracks and and everything else that, you know, is that what we're going to be seeing this summer? I hope not, but, you know, I mean, it's, I don't know, I was reading some stuff that Villapoto said, and he, he made kind of a lot of sense talking about how a track that long and that rough, you can make up two to three seconds a lap if you're riding good, and he did that. He put, you know, what did he have, a lead of like 15 or 18 seconds or something? After... I mean, yeah, he... He went down and it was laughable, you know. You go down with an 18-second lead, who cares? You're obviously going to get back up and stay in the lead unless you're dead. Yeah. See, we're at that part of the season, too, where now you can start looking at some of the other things that aren't nearly as interesting as the championship, but suddenly they became more interesting, like the battle between Dungey and Roxon for who's going to get the points, you know, who's going to get second. I'm mm -hmm. sure that chaps Dungey's ass that his rookie teammates – putting it to him, you know, most races this year. Well, you would hope that it is anyway. I mean, I, I hope it's having some effect on him and making him think maybe I need to do something a little different here. Um, I don't, yeah, he was, I don't know if this, this may make me sound kind of like a jerk, but like some of Villapoto's interviews, I'm like, I suppose when you're, you know, when you got a 20 second lead, I guess you could be a little cocky, but I was like, gosh, you're kind of a little cocky, but yeah, I thought especially his, uh, his interview with Mathis was a little bit like that. Um, of course, everybody has to bring up the fact that the race was completely sponsored by Honda and Cowie swept it. And I get that, you know, obviously they get props for that, but the, what Villapoto said about it was like, eh, okay. I guess that might be my opinion because I'm a Honda guy. Everybody knows I'm a Honda guy, but um, just the way he said, obviously we know who has the best bike now. You know, it's kind of like you could have maybe done without saying that. You know, right? You know, real classy, buddy or buddy, whatever I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure you put him on a Honda, he's gonna do the same thing. Yeah, I did enjoy. I don't know who put that uh, pick together. But um, the Island of Misfit Toys <laughs> tweet was pretty damn funny. Yeah, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Basically, it looks like, you know who, uh, well, from Rudolph, uh, Yukon Cornelius. Yeah. <laughs> it was basically his face on Villapoto's body on the podium. <laughs> it was pretty damn good. <laughs> Should have shared that. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty good. Um, I didn't see, uh, Tedesco crashed out in practice, right? Did you guys, cause I was kind of bummed. Like I was hoping to watch all the practice and stuff. And then it was like, Oh, that's right. They don't do that for that one. So I didn't see, yeah. see anything. I know Tomac was out. Tedesco was out. Didn't, um, um, I'm drawing a blank here. Wasn't Weston Pike? He didn't. He didn't finish either. He didn't even start, did he? Or did he run one practice? I thought he got hurt. And I thought he riding went... during the week or something hurt his back. Mm, see, I didn't even hear that. But uh, must, must have been pretty bad to keep him out because he's generally not phased by anything. I guess the the one I was most bummed about was Tomac. I mean, it seemed like he was kind of finally getting back into a decent shape and, and maybe showing something, and that sucks that he was out. I, I don't know that he was riding much better at Indy than he was anywhere else. He just happened to get lucky because Stuart Roxon and Villapoto crashed off the start. I think that's how he got third. Yeah, I guess that's a good I mean, point. I think he would have been right where we, you know, sixth place otherwise. But Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, I guess, how it goes sometimes. Keep in mind, Alessi was beating him. So. Yeah. Still lap 12 or whatever. <laughs> what do you All mean? right, fine. You you knocked me back down. Well, no, not just you. I mean, i seen some posts. Like Mathis, he was all about the Tomac train. I mean, it, it's so funny to me, like, talking about how great Tomac looked at Indianapolis. I'm like, doesn't he realize that, I mean, sure he looked great because he was in a good position but don't you think he got that position because there was some other mishaps that happened to guys that would normally beat him yeah but and it was just suddenly Tomac's back he's awesome but if you look at it the other way he's not the one that went down well yeah but I mean yeah whatever if my uncle was Bob she'd have nuts or whatever <laughs> <laughs> you know the saying well things just got weird Jeff <laughs> I don't. I can't think of the saying. If my uncle, or if my aunt had nuts, she'd be my uncle. <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> just, just keep those thoughts to yourself. Let's just quit while we're ahead, shall we? Or behind, or whatever we are. Oh God. Um, <laughs> I can quit before I start. <laughs> What's well, everybody knows you can't stop once you start. It stings. Stinks. <clears throat> Did uh, I guess I didn't see. And stinks a little bit. Oh boy, I didn't hear. What did they ever say? What happened to to Superbad's bike? You can keep talking. Whoa! It, it was the same thing that happened to Wilson's, right? Electrical. I don't know that they ever came out and said for sure that that's what happened or what actually happened. I haven't seen anything. I guess. God, imagine if that was the main event, how pissed Mitch would be. Oh. I guess he got He's lucky. It, it did happen during the heat race because Wilson's obviously happened at a, the worst time possible. He got lucky that he didn't get run over. <laughs> yeah, it was just weird watching him just come to a slow, you know, slow down to. It looked like maybe the engine had died there at first, and then it came back to life. It looked almost identical to what Wilson had going on, but yeah, minus the flame. Yeah. Do you think he likes or doesn't like the fact that we uh, um, call him super bad? Do you think he knows that's us? I don't know if he knows that we call him super bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to think he that's knows we call him super bad. But... But I, th- I mean, maybe if he knew the root of it, he might not like it so much. But And you know what? After, I mean, it's a cool nickname. It's cooler than AC. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How creative. Where's your brother, DC? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was dumb. Shut up. Um, I'm not going to boo myself, though. <laughs> boo. <laughs> what, did, uh, what did you guys think of like the TV coverage? Did it seem different? Or was that just me? It was a lot less black and green. Well, I think it, yeah, it no, matter, no matter what, it's going to look different because it's a completely different layout. And so I don't know, I guess. I don't know if I can say that there was a difference or not. Well, like, how about the lighting, man? I couldn't believe how bright it looked on the track compared to years past. I was just saying, like, um, I honestly... And no, sir, just wasn't that many passing. It was like I didn't see anybody pass anybody. Well, I think part of the issue there is you're dealing with... They're dealing with a fairly narrow area, so you can't build a track with a whole lot of turning unless you go sideways like they kind of have in the past. But because they went the long way like they did, it was just drag race after drag race after drag race. And the corners that were there were so one-lined that you couldn't really do anything any different unless you wanted to go three miles out of the way. Right. Um. Yeah. Did you guys see that little spotlight that they were doing too? <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like that. No, I. I don't know. I'm, I know they do that for arena cross. I would have to assume that has to screw with you a little bit. I'm yeah, assuming would, you don't I not would, notice. I would think that would bother the hell out of you. But don't, don't they know. only do it on the last lap in arena cross? Though it's just the final lap. Right. Yep. And this looked like it was on him for quite a bit of the race. 
Or maybe it was just the final lap. I can't remember. No, I think it was on for most of the race. Yeah, I guess it's probably just so that the fans can see where the leader is, I would imagine, and that's not too bad. But it really wasn't (laughs) like it was, you know, I mean, the lighting was pretty good. So the the spotlight thing, I bet it wasn't as big of an issue as if the lighting had been worse. (laughs) What happened? Paddleford, you're not right. <laughs> we got a listener chiming in? Yes. <laughs> nice. That's what we want. Yeah, I don't know if I want messages like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, what uh, what did you guys think of that LCQ? I, to me, that was the most exciting part of the whole entire race. Oh, definitely the end of the LCQ. Yeah, yep. I think I think they should have just turned it into drag racing and done that all night. What uh, what was that guy's name? Oh, it's I'm gonna butcher his last name. It was like a Jacob, is it ba- Baumart or something like that? And Ryan Zimmer. I thought that was pretty cool. I wish they would have figured out how far those guys launched. You didn't think they was, figure? Didn't they figure it was like 130? I I I knew they drew out the like the. <laughs> oh no! Tell Nana to calm down. <laughs> you just did. He's disruptive. <laughs> I can put my phone away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I knew they marked off like where the the double was, which was what 75 or something like that. I thought it was longer than that. Mm. I could be wrong, though. Well, it depends, because the landing of the double was kind of the berm for the first corner, so uh, on one side of the track, it was longer than it would have been on the other. Right. Uh Uh-oh. But, yeah, I thought, yeah. I can't remember who I was tweeting, and uh, they were were like, what was the most exciting part of the, the night? And I was like, sadly, the 250 LCQ. So, and it was only four seconds of that, or maybe two to three seconds of that, that were entertaining. The end there on that straightaway. Um, it was cool to see those guys. I don't know. We were talking about it when we watched it, but it was just the one dude on the left scrubbed it so much better than the other dude. Zimmer just launched it <laughs> and went like fifteen feet further, and just. I'm sure if he'd have made it in, he'd have had to change a wheel or something from that. Kind of oh. Thing. Could you imagine if he would have caught one of them tough blocks instead of splitting them just perfectly like he did? <laughs> I mean, he would have gone sailing. Yeah, that would, uh, well, yeah, it could have been ugly. Mm-hmm. It could have been ugly. I didn't even, th- I, I stumbled on this today, too. I didn't know that they were streaming the RCU stuff, or I guess it's not RCU, whatever the Carmichael's deal is. Yeah, but I, we decided that that's I, next year what Jason and I are going to do. Oh, yep, maybe. Yep, yep, that's the goal for next year. Until somebody plans a wedding and then yeah. we can't go. Yeah, have to. Luckily, no one gets married in March, so. Luckily. I don't know. You'd hope not. Just for that, I'm going to get married. I'm gonna get married. I, say, I don't have anyone that I know that I care. To, I mean, that wouldn't be married at that point, except for you, Jason. And I, I don't see that happening. Yeah, that's not happening. So don't worry about it. Um, I don't, I'm gonna have to find this. I saved it. Let's see if I can't dig it up. What do you guys think of um, Barsha and uh, Little Malcolm? <laughs> Uh, I want to hear your thoughts first. Okay, I'm going to open it up right now. I <laughs> caught this on Varsha's Twitter. It says, 100% clean pass. Homeboy should have checked up like any normal rider would would do instead of nailing the gas and making a good pass go bad. Um, you called him Homeboy? Home. That was a direct quote from Varsha's Twitter. <laughs> Wow. I'm surprised he's not being called a racist or some bullshit, uh, bulls, you know. What, bullspit? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I forgot we're trying to clean it up. We're trying to clean up our act. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I don't know if he if Barsha hit him and that's what caused his front wheel to kind of tuck a little bit. Are you watching it right now? I, no. I was going to watch it and pull it up, but I'm pretty I sure watched... it was a clean pass until Barsha washed his front tire. Yep, I've watched it several times, and judging by the texts I'm getting here, this is not going to be a popular opinion, but I don't care. Um, it looked like a perfectly clean attempt to me until his front tire popped out of the rut. And then there's... Yeah, I mean, there was no doubt to me that Barsha was going to fall down at that point, no matter what. And I think Malcolm just turned into him. Well, the, he just tried to square up underneath of him, and when he squared up, you know, Barsha was falling down right there in front of him. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of Barsha. I mean, as far as his riding goes, obviously I don't know him, but I haven't really been a fan of his yeah. aggressive. It was funny because we're watching it, and I see Barsha coming up on Malcolm, and I said, I was going to say these two have history because remember the last outdoor of the year – when uh, Mookie took him out, and uh, I couldn't even say it, and before I even, I had French toast in my mouth too, but. Um, <laughs> there was that. <laughs> I'm trying to say something, and all of a sudden they're on the ground, you know, but. <laughs> what was worse than the takeout was Malcolm trying to ghost ride his bike at Barsha's face, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I thought that was way worse than what actually happened. I mean, like I said, the two of them coming into that corner, I expected Barsha to, to maybe ride a little rough. Like you say, the history, just because he's Barsha, I think he did his damnedest to keep that as clean as he possibly could. Yes, maybe he overrode the corner a little bit, but, I mean, it's racing. That's part of it. But I do not think that he intended at all for that to happen. And I knew as soon as it happened, no matter what, Oh, it's Barsha. It's Bam Bam. Of course he did it on purpose, and he's a dirty rider. Well, that's the that's the reputation he's built for himself now. Anytime there's an altercation with him, whether it's his fault or not, he's going to take the lion's share of the blame just because of his history. Yeah. To me, it's just sad because, you know, I've heard people making comparisons to Alessi, and there's no comparison between Alessi and Tickle and Barsha and Stewart. There's no way that you can even... They don't even come close. Well, Barsh is a hell of a lot better at taking people out and making it look like he's attempting to <laughs> ride, you know, unless he's yeah. very blatant with his takeout. That was an accident, Jeff. I don't know. His clutch, he had clutch issues. <laughs> it's a little touchy. <laughs> his foot came off the brake, you guys. Yeah. I mean, come on. And caused his right wrist to twist and his left fingers to let go. Hey, man. Some people are just built that way. <laughs> Do you think that maybe um, he kind of dove it in there and, like, Stewart's, you know, he's just kind of like a fill-in. Like, you think there's any, like, respect there? Like, hey, you're not even really – not saying that you don't belong there, but, like, hey, you know, let me buy or – do you think well, I don't. I don't think you can expect that. I mean, if you want to just say Malcolm was just a fill-in, Barsha's not exactly in it for points. Right. I mean, he's pretty much on the same level if you're going down that road. <clears throat> uh, well, but, but you can't expect. I mean, given their history, I'm sure Barsha wanted to pass him with a little bit of attitude. He probably, you know, wanted to make a point when he passed him that, hey, I'm, I'm faster than you. I'm not going to make it. You know, I don't think he was going to make it super, you know, respectful or whatever, give him all the room in the world. But, I mean, I don't... Well, I feel like how else was he supposed to pass him? There was three ruts in that corner. Stewart's in the middle rut. There's an outside rut. And Barsha takes the inside rut. How was he supposed to go around him? Yeah. You know, if you're going to make a pass in that corner, he went the only way he could. Yeah, maybe he came in a little fast, but you know, you're not a track like Daytona. You're never gonna make a pass if you're not gonna be aggressive in the corners. So, in my opinion, you have to be. Well, and they were going for what, like third place, I think, at the time. Yeah. I mean, I don't Something think like Barsha that. was, you know, obviously he was gonna probably try to make the pass and stay upright himself, being yeah. he was in a very good position. So, I don't think he would be dumb enough to try to risk that. 
no. doing something like that. So I, I think it was totally accidental. And and on the other side of it, I can completely understand Malcolm thinking that it was on purpose too. I can see him thinking that. I would hope it was. You wouldn't just try to wheelie your bike into somebody and... I mean, yeah, maybe he had a little something coming if he thought that it was on purpose, but come on, dude, grow up a little bit. Well, that was, I mean, that's dangerous as hell. You know, what? there's a chain flying around on there pretty fast, and not to mention a tire and sprocket, and he flipped that whole bottom of the bike right at Marsha's yeah. face, basically. Not to mention a 220-pound machine if you yeah. happen to let go of it. I'm kind I of mean, surprised that... The AMA didn't say anything about that, although he may claim that you know he was just anxious to get going and whatever. But yeah, I don't think I don't think you can do that. You know what though? I've seen that a lot though with pro riders when they fall down. It seems like a lot of times they either leave the gas just wide open and try to get on it, and they pop the clutch and they end up looping out or acting all squirrely. It's because they're in such a hurry to get going, and they I've seen guys lose the bike because they just don't let off the gas and they're just way too antsy to get going but this was obviously like a you know f you i'm gonna ride over you yeah i would have thought i would have thought hey maybe that's what happened if he hadn't gotten up right after the track and gone and tried to hit barsha yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while his bike was leaking radiator fluid no no get this scotty this is this is great <laughs> We decided that that wasn't actually radiator fluid. That was just Predator's blood. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot about that, too. Uh, um, hang on, we got... Uh, I think you're a doing sh- a little type in there. We'll do a little <laughs> shout-out to, uh, to the open <clears throat> mic guys. Andy, he's shooting me some texts on Facebook. He's ah, uh, sweet. Well, Jason, you said you went and checked out their show. Um, so he says, uh, he says everything sounds great. He goes, I'm not sure what these guys are talking about, but it sounds great. <laughs> so, Well, Andy, I listened to your show, and part of the time I wasn't sure what you were talking about either, but I liked it. <laughs> I'm not certain we know what we're talking about, so he's probably not either, too so. far off. Yeah, he's all right. Um, yeah. He had me until he started talking about making bread, and then I was a little bit confused. <laughs> was he talking about money? No. Oh. I don't. Well, he was talking about yeast. I don't think you're talking about yeast if you're making money. You never made it rain yeast. Uh, no, not on purpose. <laughs> uh, you get a feeling. You guys are talking about the radiator. Um, when we went and watched uh, that guy Ryan, he set that world re- world record for the wheelie. Um, he got a. Still with what are you doing? Is that what? Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> Are we back? Oh, what happened? Is, is that where the show's heading down the toilet? Um. Yeah, I just I just flushed the first segment down the shitter. I mean, <laughs> where's that beep button? <laughs> um. But yeah, he had a hole in his radiator, so I think they were actually like dumping. Uh, uh, they had a couple cans of beer. I think was the temporary fix. That's pretty funny. Oh, perfect. Hey, I got to give a little bit of a shout out here. I just got a text from Alby. The boys are on their way home from Texas and they're tuning in tonight. Drive safe, boys. Who's this? Madison. I don't know. Did we lose Jeff? Uh oh. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Did he mute himself? He says he's still I don't here. Know. Jeff. I don't know what happened to him. Hmm. We'll see if he comes back. Um, we'll have to get Buzz Lightyear to go after Woody. <clears throat> Buzz Lightyear. Sorry, gents. Whoa. I stepped away for a moment. Have to tinkle? 
hey, you tell us where you're going. All right? We were worried sick about you. I had to take a phone call from an anonymous phone number. Whoa. Everybody knows you don't take those phone calls. Well, should we get our uh, our guest on? Yeah, I think it's guest about on. that time. All right. You guys chit chat. I'll get him I'll get it going here. Chit chat. Chit chit chat. Chit chit. I don't know if you that Jeff, but uh, we got a shout out from LB and the boys on their way back from Texas. They're listening in. Oh yeah? Awesome. Yeah. I um I I I'm very envious of them cuz they rode some awesome tracks from the looks of it. Yeah, but just remember they're on their way back here, suckers. Turn That's around, and go back, boys. Yep. You don't want to come back here. Yeah. If we keep getting days like today, we might be riding in July. No, no. I heard um, Dave Dahl said if we get 15 days of the the weather we had on Sunday, the snow will be gone. I heard that Ian Leonard guy the other night that at 48 degrees or whatever, we should be melting an inch of snow. Yeah. Well, so. it was pretty dang nice out today, and there was there's a ton of snow gone out of the fields and stuff. Yeah. Um, between Farmington and Northfield, so it's a good sign. And it, it yeah. melted all night last night, I think. It was 40 degrees when I got in my car this morning, so. Yeah. Right on, snow, right on. Um, <clears throat> um, what are you wearing? <laughs> what am I wearing? <laughs> um, I'm not good at small silk stuff, shirt so. and a flowered silk shirt and a flowered vest. Oh. What are you wearing? Of course, why wouldn't you be wearing that? Uh oh. Well, what would you expect me to wear? You got chiming. Uh oh. I hear the tone. What's going on? <clears throat> going on, Nick? Oh, Black Diamond MX's Nick Jackson, ladies and gentlemen, on the program. How's everybody doing? Doing real well. How about you, buddy? Oh, it's driving home. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, Nick. Are you race? Are you going to Detroit or no? Yeah, yeah, I'll be in Detroit and uh, St. Louis, possibly Houston, but the the next two for sure. So. Nice. Nick is our first first time second guest. Would that make sense? Two time guest. That would make. Yep, two timer. Yeah, he's our first two timer. Nice. Yep. Ah. Uh, so how did it go down in? Uh, you went to Indy, right? Yeah. What'd you think? Um, do you want me to make up a? A good story, or tell you really how it was. Oh, it don't matter. We're we're up for anything. No, I don't know. I uh, I rode terrible. Um, I don't know. It was super disappointing the way I rode because I've been riding a ton and getting ready for it, and felt like I was ready for it. <clears throat> Just uh, couldn't pull the trigger on a lot of stuff, and wasn't as comfortable as I thought I was. I feel like oh. people can't blame you too much. I mean, that track was gnarly as hell, especially in practice. I mean, that's it what, like. Yeah, that's what a bunch of my buddies who uh, were there racing the 450 class too. They were like, "Man, you picked a good one. Yeah, good one to come back to." And I didn't even think it was really something I couldn't have handled. Um, the only thing that was giving me trouble was the finish line and how it was so spaced out. I couldn't couldn't time it like my supercross track and any other one i wrote it's like you know exactly how fast to hit the finish line pretty much every weekend yeah. but they had like a a big run up to it and it didn't help that it was rutted i just was definitely uh definitely not comfortable i mean the bike the bike was amazing uh i've got that thing dialed in and uh, i felt good going into it i just couldn't put it together and then uh, my last practice I finally I finally started putting everything together and I dropped a full six seconds on my last time I mean I my first one was terrible so I had a lot of room for improvement but I just uh, I got one lap in and dropped six seconds and every lap after that I would make a mistake and it was just super frustrating 
because I had a bunch of people there supporting me and some guys that are helping sponsor me, and I I felt like I rode terrible. So I'm hoping next weekend or this weekend is uh, going to be a little bit different. Well, I guess the one way to look at it, your first race this year, I mean, yeah, obviously you probably wanted to do better, but... You know, you got that one under your belt. Now you go to Detroit. You kind of know, I mean, you knew what to expect before, but now you know what you got to do, you know, get out there and get it done. Yeah, I mean, like when I was doing the series full time, you know, I wasn't wasn't a top 10 guy or anything, you know. I just would make it into the night shows. And the last two years, two years ago, I rode one Supercross, and that was straight off the couch, so... Last year, I mean, my first one last year was the same way. I mean, the track wasn't as gnarly, but I still wasn't as comfortable. And after the first one, I, you know, I kind of got comfortable right away, and I made the next two that I did. So. Now you, uh, you normally, <clears throat> I think you've said this before, but you got your your track you can ride at, but obviously it's probably got four feet of snow on it. Yeah, I mean, like the track. The track in my house is, it was actually pretty similar to to what Indy was, but um, this year we had more of a, a dry a dry fall and like my track didn't really get rutted. Usually it's it's the same the same exact way Indy is. I'll have frame deep ruts off the jumps. But I usually don't have a problem problem hitting jumps like that, but just for my first one and. I don't know. I just I wasn't feeling good. I didn't want to push it and get hurt because, I mean, my main goal is to ride a good chunk of the outdoors and kind of prove myself there. But it still, still was a bummer for me because I know where I should be at. Even if I haven't rode a Supercross track in three months, it's still the fact that I've been riding and I shouldn't have failed as bad as I thought I did, so. But you can't you can't compare like uh, it's seat the Cedar Lake Arena, right? Because it's changed. Yeah, I mean, I mean the track. You know, you can't compare a Supercross track to it. But just the riding time. Usually, I don't have a problem adapting on the fly. Okay. Whether it's a Supercross track or not, like usually I can adapt within you know at least the first practice. But our first practice was so terrible. I didn't jump triple not a single triple the whole first practice because they groom they groomed the track right away i mean it was fresh for all the 250 guys and they went out and touched it up for the a groups and then they left it the rest of the time for for the b and c 450 guys which are were the last group every time so i kind of wonder why they do that how do they 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 i don't know it's stupid the ama does it every year I've uh, that too in watching a lot of the qualifying, and it's like the A guys get a pristine track, and I wonder if it's intentional. I wonder if it's to try to make sure that the guys that make it yeah, in are legit. Yeah, I mean, it, are legit. you got to believe, believe that it is. You hope that it's not like that, but you, it is. A lot of the AMA and the pro stuff is a lot of politics. I mean, ask any privateer, they'll tell you that. Yeah. But regar- regardless of of what the track was like I still don't feel like I rode like myself it sucks because a lot of people have been doubting me and ask me why I still even try to do it but it's, I know where I'm at I know what I've been doing this winter to prepare myself yeah. it's just frustrating but or at the same time I'm, I'm trying to block it out Nick- I'm in swinging this weekend People never stop asking you that for some reason. You know, I, I'm 30, and where I work, I, when people ask me about it or I tell people about it, they're like, aren't you a little old for that? I'm like, we got classes for like 55 plus and 60 plus. You're never too old for it. <laughs> Drives me no, I, People don't understand. I, it. It's, it's, like, it's yeah. not. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, there's always going to be people talking. But I don't know. I just I've put a lot more effort into it this year than I have since I stopped doing the pro stuff full time. The biggest thing for me is I'm 
yeah, I'm 25 years old. I just turned 25, but I don't want to be 30 some years old and wish that I would have still done it. Yeah. And and I wouldn't I wouldn't try to keep doing it if I didn't think that I still had it in me. And I mean, I've been proven to myself every week. I mean, but even though it's at Cedar Lake, it's still there's little things that I pick up on that I have forgotten about. You know, and I, I feel like I get faster every time I ride. Nick, I think we I we kind of talked about this, I think, last week. Um, which which do you like better? Would you rather do Supercross or would you rather do the outdoors? I mean, I I personally, I love being outside. Don't get me wrong. That's what we grew up doing. <clears throat> but I wish for the out. It, they both have pluses and minuses, I guess. Um, I really like Supercross. Just because I that's the kind of stuff I grew up on. I used to have a small arena cross track, and that's, that's what I would ride during the week. When my dad wouldn't, wouldn't be able to take me practicing, I would ride on more of an arena cross style track. And that just, it comes more natural to me. And I don't know. I love, I love the outdoors, but with the outdoors, I wish they would just go back. I wish they'd go back to qualifying, like actual racing qualifying. Mm. Cause there, there's guys that can, like for supercross is different. If you can sprint, you know, for a couple laps, that's fine. But for the outdoors, it's, you know, 30 to 40 minute long motos. You got guys who can throw down one fast lap to practice and then go out, do decent for a lap or two, and then they give up or they can't go the whole moto. And they'll either pull off or just slow down and ride around just to get their money. What? So I, that's what bothers me because I usually am stronger at the end of my motos, regardless if I've been riding all summer and training or not like i'm always faster my last few laps of of a moto so what is the if you make an outdoor moto what is it do you know like the payout i don't even know i don't even know what it is i know when i qualified at millville when i was riding 450s in 2011, I think I made like 600 bucks or something like that, but they pay out by moto. Hmm. And they never really post anywhere that has the actual payout payment. Like, they, they finally put one up this year for Supercross. I know last year I couldn't find one at all, but you kind of just knew what you were getting. Because so. isn't it a 1000 for 450s? Uh, well... For 450 for Supercross, it's like nine. I think it's like 937 just to make the top 40. And then when you break, if you finish 11th or better in the LCQ, it jumps up to over a grand. Mm -hmm. And then each spot beyond 11th, it goes up like a couple bucks, like 25 to 50 dollars for each spot. Okay. But then like the lights class last year, the two that I qualified at last year, I made 230 dollars. Which an entry fee is two hundred. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the thirty dollars that that I have left over. But you got to pay taxes on it, I suppose. <laughs> if you make enough, yeah. yeah luckily, <laughs> luckily last year I I only qualified for the the two out of three I did, so I didn't have to pay in. But the year that I that I did make over the amount where they start taxing you, I yeah I I paid in four hundred dollars. <laughs> and I, Ugh. all the money that I got was basically dried up from just entry fees alone and the travel. Well, to top it off, you got to sink a ton of money into your bike to make it competitive on a 250, also. Yeah, that's why. That's why I went back to the 450 this year because right now my my 450, I have pipe suspension and the only thing in the motor I have my high compression system that I put in, and that makes I didn't. Like, I've never compared my 450 back-to-back, like, with anything else, but I rode, I have one bike, and I've rode, I've rode it all winter. Bone stock, no pipe, nothing. I had suspension and, like, my bars and stuff. And before Indy, uh, Mike Little with KB5, um, 
who's been helping me out a ton this winter, um, he we put a high compression piston in it, and that alone, like, was night and day different. The bike was actually a lot more rideable than what it was. Uh, it smoothed everything out. Well, I was gonna say you're not looking for more power in that thing, are you? You're just looking for better. Power? No, no. I mean, outdoors, I probably will, like for starts and hills and stuff like that. But I mean, my 450 now compared to I had like a full modded out 450 uh, in 2011 when I was riding Suzuki, and it was perfect for outdoor stuff because like the pro races most of the, most of the tracks we go to are just wide open and it's not like going to Kellogg or even like Millville riding like a local district race there versus the national it's so much different I would like so, to know why anyone would want to mod anything on a 450 but that's just me and I don't know. Yeah, any- I mean, I mean, for like, for like the B group again. When you go to outdoors, they'll never put the A group out first because it's swampy and they they water the track so much that it that it's like it, it just rains right. a couple inches usually. Um, so like having that extra power in that stuff is needed. Otherwise, it's just you're burning up flushes. You're burning up the motors but um i don't know and i just generally like riding the 450 better um, i ride it a lot smoother than i do i have to be super super aggressive on the 250 and like i feel like i the older i'm getting it and i mean i'm not even that old but i don't feel like i can ride it the way i need to that and i've gained you know like 20 pounds so, riding a 450 is more, more fits my style a lot more. Sweet, Jason, are you back? Yeah. Are you back? Yeah, I, I'm back. I'm sorry. Got some technical. Am, am I, am I hearable? You're here. You are hearable. Sweet. Audible. I actually, I didn't get to catch the show last week, so kind of Oh, I thought you were our number one fan. I am, but last week, I can't even remember what I was doing. Last well, week. thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't thank you enough all for right. all the time. <laughs> I I haven't. I've been listening to him, like, the day after, though, if I do miss it. Yeah. So I think, I think that's nice that you guys are putting him up. Yeah, we tried to get him up uh, right away, so if anyone's listening, yeah, you just should just be able to go to the talkingmoto.com and click on the podcast and yeah we should have it up if yeah if, it's, it's a lot easier to get to than when you guys first started that's for sure yeah trying to make it easier sometimes scott has a hard time uh getting things up in a timely fashion but we're going yeah. big time <laughs> but like like i've been telling people i what you guys are doing is i think it's, it's cool because like hopefully you guys will carry it you know into the summer and, and cover, you know, some of the local stuff and get people on that, you know, race every weekend around here. Because most of the time we got guys that are traveling and kind of keep up to date with everything that's going on. And it's just oh, cool that's... to have something like that around our area, you know, not just listening to the pro guys every weekend. It's kind of cool to have, you know, a local perspective and, like, amateur guys, just your everyday average rider. Nope, for sure. That's kind of my plan for the summer, you know, is to, you know, to go to a bunch of races, kind of do the tour, and just, uh, you know, hopefully get a setup that we can bring a few mics along and sit down and talk moto with people. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely, it brings back how the racing used to be, I guess, when it was, when we had full gates every weekend and the amount of people that were at the track just bringing it back to that level oh, hang on jason That's the goal. keep it going what keep her going why cause... i'll stay on for the summer what? depending on how much you to pay me the paychecks are, are going to yes are you guys getting paid in girl scout cookies i mean i would work for that i would take them but no one's offered them yet so i guess i'm just working for free 
Them, I had to stop and steal some on the way home. I was going to say, them girls are out. Right oh, yeah. There's I haven't time had of the year. House. Not one. None, none of them have come to my some... house, but what? they're lined up along the highway in Rosemont on the way home from work today. The only thing I get at my house is a bunch of damn college kids trying to sell me some, well, they want me to donate to some charity. Ah. I had another guy trying to fix my siding today. One of these days, I'm going to let those guys do it. Did you ever have the guy come back with his orange cleaner and spray it in his mouth? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, Nick, I feel bad because I missed out on, like, all of this except for the first two minutes because apparently having a computer that's six years old is not a good idea if you're going to do this. Yeah, but, definitely uh, not. <laughs> so you said that you are going to Detroit? Correct. Yeah, Detroit and St. Louis for sure. Okay, how are you going about doing that? You just kind of doing the same thing, just kind of gypsying out there. You are is uh, Joe going with you, or what are you doing? Uh, Joe is in Texas right now. I he uh he's got to go back to work unfortunately, so he'll be he'll be back with me uh, for St. Louis. Oh, okay. But um, there's uh there's a couple people helping out. I mean, if it wasn't for the people that I've gotten to help this winter I wouldn't be doing anything but riding at Cedar Lake pretty much. Um, I've got Ken Ginkle uh, from the National Disney and Balance Center. Um, they test like your uh, basically what we have to do for the pro stuff uh, for the concussion testing and all that. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to raise awareness with his company and uh, trying to get something set up at the local races and, and come down and educate riders and stuff on you know, the importance of, you know, when you have concussions, stuff like that on what you should be doing to get better. And there's testing to, to see, you know, where you're at before you get one. So he's been helping out um, quite a bit with some expense stuff. Um, I know he helped me and Joe both for Indianapolis. Nice. And uh, Rick Shugel with RSR, uh Williams and Wetland's team. Um, he's helped me out a little bit here and there with parts and, and uh, just, you know, kind of being there if I need anything. And, uh, Mike Little over over at KP5. Um, I've basically been using his garage as my garage all winter. So, and he's been helping out with keeping my bikes up, up and going and, uh, I mean, he goes beyond what I ask. I mean, I don't even ask. He, like, called me today. He's like, oh, your bike should be ready Wednesday to ride. Got it all washed up, ready to go. And I didn't even ask you. So yeah. he's been helping out a ton on that level. So it, it's made it easier. I asked him if I could get in on that plan, and he shot me down. I don't know what I did. But... Uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's getting busy. I've been... Uh, I told him he might have to quit his normal job and actually go full time with it because I plan on pumping him up pretty big this summer and, and getting him enough business to keep him going. So. Hey, sure. hey, Nick, I uh, hopefully I'm not tossing you under the bus here. So you're ready? Yeah. We had a we had a I had a phone call. We had a call in question from uh, one of our past guests, uh, Andrew Bauer. Yeah. And he wants to know if you've ever walked up a flight of stairs with EVS knee braces on your elbows on New Year's Eve. I, I have no idea what he's talking about, but uh, it, it might have happened. God, man, that was probably five, six years ago, maybe longer. Uh, that's all I got. He was calling. He's, yeah, he's... thank you. Thank you, Andrew. There, there has to be a story behind this. You can't just leave the rest of us hanging. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, off, right. off the air. I, don't, I don't quite remember. Have, have Andy fill us in on the rest of it. <laughs> yep, yep. Coming up Someday. next, Andy. <laughs> oh boy. What, uh, what did you think of the uh, Daytona, Nick? Did you have a chance to watch it? <clears throat> I mean, I've personally rode Daytona. I've qualified there, I think, twice before. Once or twice, and uh, I mean that track is always gnarly rough. It's uh, it's basically an outdoor track compact. 
into a small area, and it gets uh, it gets rough and ugly. I mean, I I mean, I can't say that I uh, didn't expect Villapoto and Baggett to sweep it, but I mean, those were both my predictions. Um, but uh, the lead that Villapoto pulled at the end, I I didn't think it was going to be that big of a margin. Yeah, I think I, I, uh, I think everybody is going to be in it. for uh, yeah. I think everybody's going to be in for a rude awakening this summer if that's that's what he's going to do at Daytona. Yep, that's exactly on, what I'm afraid on a, of. On a shorter lap time track than an actual outdoor. Yeah. But I was I was pumped on Dino. Um, I've gotten to know him just when he was here for this summer for the before he turned pro. Um, he was hanging out with Jay Bloberg and I rode with him a few times and got to kind of know him and I went out to eat with him and Jake before a few times at the Nationals and stuff like that and I've always been a big fan of him. I was pumped to see him throw down the fastest time and then go out and win the seat race to kind of show everybody that it wasn't a fluke, you know? Yeah, I think he's cool. Um, I guess the only thing I'm a little... I don't know. I'm, you guys will make fun of me, but, like, I hate when RV gets the whole shot. I think it's kind of boring. And then, like, when I seen the pro circuit bikes around the first corner, pretty much one, two, three, it's like, uh... I mean, yeah, it was over from there. <laughs> it left, well, Villapoto fell, and it didn't even matter, but... Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I definitely thought... I mean, I think Stewart would have been up there if he wouldn't have had his uh, mishap with the lefty's bike. But um, it just—it was a bummer because no. everybody got so spread out. And, Didn't Reed lose his header pipe at Melville? Millville? Did ah, it... you did it again! Ah, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Mel, Mel, where's Melville? <laughs> Why do I do that? It must be in Wisconsin somewhere. That's all I can figure. It's 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 terrible. <laughs> like everybody says, you know, people from Minnesota have accents. I didn't. I don't ever think that. But when we when I listen to you guys like on the radio, it's it's bad. It's, you can tell you guys have bad accents. Oh, I know. I have and a I, terrible I might accent. I might too, but <laughs> like I can't tell like what what I sound like. But listening to to you guys especially, I wonder. There's a there's a there's a heavy accent in there. Well, yeah, did I'm... you hear the story, Nick, about when we went to Texas? Jason, we were at a gas station, and, and Jason said, like, hey, uh-huh, to, a, to the guy there, and or the woman there, and she goes, oh, you're from Minnesota, huh? <laughs> like, he didn't even say actual words, and she picked up on it. Oh, that's funny. I didn't even say out um... or about. <laughs> <laughs> or for cripe's sake. Or for cripe's sake. Yeah, cripe's sake. Uh, Great! Now I forgot what I was even talking about. I have I have definitely noticed that you were uh, talking the last about weeks, Reed. I had a wicked accent. Yeah, yeah. His, his head pipe. That was like 2005. He was leading the race, and his head yeah. came off, and he ended But up... it it completely fell off, though. It, it's different if it completely falls off or it gets pinched. Yeah, did Stewart's you? Didn't, didn't didn't fall off. It got totally pinched. Did you see and the when it the does that, it? Oh my god! Yeah, when it when it gets pinched like that, it basically the bike will cut out and you feel like you have no power at all like if you have no head around there at all it makes a lot of noise but most of the power is still there no that that would have been like riding with your uh butt plug still in yeah i mean muffler plug still in sorry i've had i've had a header fall off and i've pinched one and you definitely would rather have it fall off than having it pinched. It was almost pinched close, it looked like, from the photo. So. Yeah, that looked terrible. I can't believe it didn't actually, like, kink or bend, though. I mean, it I, just put a dent in it. That was I was so super weird. impressed with the dent. It looked like it was made that way. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was impressed with his crew getting that thing off, off and on. Cause I've That's tried what pulling, I thought, too. I've tried pulling a header off from the front like that before. They don't come off easy. Well, and it's a bit warm. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, they had, they had like towels wrapped around it, trying to yank on it, and I guarantee somebody has a, a burnt hand <laughs> That's this the week. Instance. There's, there's that no way one of those guys did not burn their fingers. 
when we were at Millville a few years ago, I was standing by the sand wash, and uh, there was, you know, riders going through there, and one of the pros comes through, and his silencer falls off, and some idiot fan runs out there and grabs the thing and runs off the track with it. And I don't know um, if it's pretty, it but pretty sure it, it was uh, one of the star racing Yamaha's bikes because that idiot guy was a friend of mine, and <laughs> he, he, he had that exhaust for uh, probably a year or two, and then he finally like sold it because there was nothing wrong with it. It just the bolts came out. He made it like two feet, and he was like throwing it because he's like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, God. yeah, yeah. He said he said he was kicking it around on the ground and stuff, and like couldn't pick it up. But he didn't want anybody else to steal it, so he like sat by it. <laughs> I mean, That's I told awesome. I told him he was an idiot too, but. <laughs> well, I mean, I get it. I've, everyone's done it, I think, where we've all grabbed our pipe or done something stupid where we burned our gloves or burned a hole in you know, something. But it's so funny, too, how long it takes your brain to say, hey, uh, you're melting. That's the first thing when I get a new pair of gloves is melt a hole in them. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> definitely. Awesome. Your brother is real funny, Jeff. Real oh, yeah? funny. He's making fun of my Millville. The old Melville. <laughs> Melville. Melville. <laughs> was it, was Melville. It a YouTuber was? I don't even yeah. think you can call it a Minnesota accent on Scott. I think that's Wisconsin all the way. Yeah, that that seems more of a Scotty type thing. He, li- he lives over there in Milwaukee. Been over here Mel- too. Milwaukee. What about Cattywampus? Kitty Wampus. Have you have you taken that? Have you see that on Facebook? This is a while ago. There was, yeah. There's, if something's you know diagonally across, and there's different ways of saying it, and you pick which one you would say, and you know all that other stuff, and it'll tell you which region of the country you sound like you're from. So, did you pick Caddy Wampus? I think I did, because it told me I was from. Like Minneapolis or Chicago were the two areas that popped up for me. I, th- I think I saw something on where that came from. It comes from Caddy Corner or something, and it's nothing to do with cats at all or kitties. But I thought it was Kitty Corner. Well, yeah, it started as Caddy Corner, I think, and then it evolved into Kitty Corner. Mm. You know how that stupid sayings go? People come up with them and then... And then people change them? Yeah, and then people mispronounce Millville. Melville. <laughs> That's all right. I can't wait to go down to Spring Creek this summer. Whoa. Okay. All right. I'll work on it for next week. I'm gonna go get a glass of milk. <laughs> a glass of milk. <laughs> give me some milk. Okay. And we're done. <laughs> all right. You guys got anything else for Nick? You want to ask him? I don't know. What are you having for dinner tonight, Nick? Um, actually, I think some chicken breast. Nice. And uh, a salad. Doing the whole the whole diet thing kind of sucks, but yeah. when that's, are, uh, that's what I'm doing. When are you leaving then? Are you leaving Thursday or you leave Friday? Um, either gonna leave. Um, either Thursday night. Or Friday morning. I haven't really decided yet. So do you think we're going to get a real Supercross? I mean, is the dirt going to be normal? Um, I really hope so. I mean, it, it's going to get rutted no matter what the East Coast dirt always does. Um, unless you're in Dallas. But um, some people, I've heard some people saying already that the dirt for Detroit has been stored outside. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so I mean, it'll probably a good chance it'll be just like Indy, unless uh, unless they brought it in a lot sooner. Are they but going I mean, up to the it, stands with the the track? Uh, that I mean, that's what the track map. Um, I hate saying, when they but, change it from the track maps. That would really bum me out. If yeah, you know. even even Indianapolis was a little bit different. Like right after the start, it, um was supposed to be they had one less single it was supposed to be like a triple on to that tabletop 
and then and they were missing one of those, and there was something else that was missing. But uh, I I think it'd be cool. I hope they go up in the stands. It'd be something different. Sweet. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to hopefully turning it around and making it into the night show. So. Cool, man. Well, that's uh, what we're hoping for too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be looking for you. Well, I appreciate the support, boys. You got it. Well, thanks for coming on, and uh, yeah, hopefully you get it into the night show, and I'll be uh, I'll be watching on TV. On TV. On the old TV. Yeah, they actually switched us to Fox Sports One. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right now, but I'm scared. Jesus, Jesus. What is that? <laughs> you don't even know the sound of applause? God, you must suck at riding dirt bikes. Uh, I, it's, so, it's super hard to hear on my phone. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I know. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just giving you crap, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on, and good luck this weekend. Stay safe, and uh, we'll get you on again probably. Yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Later, Have a good night. Thanks, Later. Nick. We'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. We're going to have Jeff go take that away from Jason. I don't think that was really necessary. <laughs> yes, I That was not that me. Was that was Jeff. Oh. <laughs> I, I specifically refrained from downloading sound, fart sound effects. I didn't think it was necessary. I only did one, so don't say not plural. It's funny. All right, guys. Should we try this old commercial break one more time? And uh, yeah, sure, why not? Bathroom breaks, get something to drink, and we'll be right back. I gotta, I gotta go make. You got two minutes and 25 seconds. Okay. Ready, set, go. Uh Hey, what is going on, everybody? I just want to say thank you to everyone out there that's been supporting the Talking Moto podcast. It has been amazing. We have a great group of guys. We have an awesome list of sponsors. So please keep sharing, keep liking, keep spreading the word about the Talking Moto podcast. And I hope you're enjoying the show. Special thanks to Motokazi.com. Motokazi holds AMA District 23 sanctioned races at both Kellogg and Mankato, as well as hosts the Motokazi Supercross Championship Series, which is all over Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. They also have organized practice at Kellogg, Jordan, and at Mankato, as well as offer race schools so you can get all tuned in on all your riding techniques. Make sure to check out Motokazi.com for more details. MB1 Suspensions is the newest sponsor to the Talkin' Moto podcast. Based out of Corona, California, they offer engine, suspension, and coating services. If you're into supercross, motocross, supermoto, freestyle, or step up, they'll get you set up. So make sure to contact them today online at mb1suspensions.com and make sure to tell them that you heard about them from us on the Talkin' Moto podcast. Hey, we got Andy and Chad from The Open Mic. It's a weekly comedy podcast, and they talk about anything and everything, and they usually do. I've been on the podcast a few times, and it is a good time for sure. It's Friday nights, 8 p.m. Central. It's available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. There's more information available online at theopenmicpodcast.com. ProAction by FTM is one of our many great sponsors. FTM offers support to you, the rider, trackside, so when you need it the most, FTM is there for you. Not only do they offer great suspension work, but they also have many other great bike parts and accessories to help you out on the track. So make sure to check them out today at fine-tune.com. All right. Is everybody back? I'm back. Jeff is back. Jason is not back. Is not back. 
He's, he's rattling his headphones and his microphone. Jason has just fallen down the stairs. I did not fall down the stairs. I was supposed to have this ready and I didn't, so I apologize. <laughs> Jamming out. Just jamming out. Trying to. Yeah. Feel free to talk. Barky. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Um. All right. So Nick started to say it right before he left. Um. Do you guys notice? Yeah, that they switched it to Fox Sports One. I did. He kept bringing up everything that's on my list of things to talk about. <laughs> Which I didn't. Uh, I didn't even know it was on the other one. So I'm like, I'm like, dude, we got another hour to fill. Shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's. I didn't know. I didn't even know either. And I guess if it would have been on Fox Sports Two, I would have obviously not been able to watch it again. But, uh, but yeah, they said that they moved it. And what? What are the numbers? So by moving Monster Energy Supercross to Fox Sports 1, the Detroit race is now available to, available to more than 9 million U.S. households. Woo! So you think that would be a good idea from the beginning? Well, you would think so. I guess I would just, I wonder if maybe they, you know, they ran the last two on FS2 just as an experiment, so they had something to base it on maybe. I think it's awesome that they're getting, you know, that they're getting the people watching it like they want to. Right. Even if it is hurting the show for those of us loyal fans. Yeah. Um, did you disable comments on YouTube, Scotty? Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, that's what it told me on my phone. Comments were disabled for your video. Really? I was reading what my brother said. 06, it was Reed's. I thought 06 was the mud race. Maybe that was first moto. Then I believe 06 was the epic mud race. Yeah, because it didn't anyway. rain until second motos. That sounds about right. Yeah, we were just yep. talking about that the it other day. It was a deluge. Yep, yep sure. Uh huh. Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's see here. I am going to... Hey, I got I got some news, Scotty. Sure, let's hear it. It's really not that important, but it kind of ties in with last week's show. And So, you know, we talked about how there was a conflict of schedules and my summer plans were dashed and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to Indiana now to qualify in the, what is it, the northeast? Or no, I don't know, central, east, north. I believe they call it the Middle East. Middle East, yeah. Jeff's, Jeff's going to Saudi Arabia. I'm heading to Saudi Arabia to qualify for the uh, Al-Qaeda Nationals. Yes, they ride, cam <laughs> they ride camels. Yeah. <laughs> camels in Indiana. So. Oh, that was probably a little racy. <laughs> racy, yeah. Or racist. Um, no racist than homeboy should have backed down or whatever. <laughs> um, That's true. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's the game plan now. So now we're going to have some uh, out-of-state racing experience for an area qualifier, and then I'm going to head back there hopefully for a regional, assuming everything goes well. So Sweet. It ain't too bad. I'm not too worried about it. It's going to be kind of a fun little experience. A little bummed about the regional because I'm going to be have to make the trip alone. But So then... Um... Yeah. Uh, so then if you call, okay, so that's, it's regional, then area, or area, then regional? Area, then regional. So then you're going to have to go down, so you, you got to go twice, right? Uh, they're both in Indiana. Oh, so that's not. It's like eight, it looks like it's about eight and a half hours or so, so it isn't terrible. And that one is what we talked about last week, I forget the name of it though. The one. The one in Indiana. Or is that Illinois? I think Illinois, that that's Mount Carroll. Yeah, we were talking about Mount, Mount Carroll. Hmm. Um, all right. Well, let's... Uh, should we take care of some Motokazi stuff there, Jason? Yeah, let's do a little business, if we could. Do you want to do it? All business and no play. Yes, and business and no pleasure. Do you want to do the pre-sale? Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, 
most people that are familiar with Motokazi and uh, Motokazi events probably know that over the last few years they've been doing what they call a preseason sale, and the preseason sale is on, um, I believe it's on pit passes as well as uh, uh, race entries and whatnot. Basically, it's a discount. I didn't do the research I should have because I was doing what Scott's about to talk about uh, when I should have been doing that research. Um, but anyway, the preseason sale goes on through March 21st. Um, it's a good way to spend some money if you're going to go to the races anyway. Why not uh, plan a little bit ahead of time? And and all of the uh, all of the entries, the race entries, the pit entries that you buy are transferable. So. If something should happen, you can't make it this year. They work the next year. So uh, it's something that I've always liked. It's something I've never done because I am lazy and never get it done. But I think I probably will this year. I think it's a good idea. So, yeah, preseason sale goes on through uh, March 21st. So check out more at uh, motokazi.com. Nice. Yeah, and I got everything. It's Well, if you're listening and you got your YouTube up, you can see the prices. Yeah, so pretty much, yeah, you're going to the races anyway, or you're going to the track to practice, or even the race schools. Everything's kind of, you know, discounted if you buy if you buy them all kind of at once or the package. And, yep, like Jason said, there's more, and all the info is on Motokazi's website, so motokazi.com. Yeah, yeah. So then the other thing they got going on is uh, they're taking the applications for their Team Motokazi, and the deadline for that is March 31st, and then they'll announce the team on April 10th, and they'll post a link up on the website. Um, I don't know if you guys ever did this. I never did, but it's kind of cool. They got Factory Rider, Cool Factory, and the Privateer, and each tier is a little bit different. Um, you get Motokazi Bucks. You know, to use for your your race entries, your pit passes, all that kind of stuff. Or you can buy t-shirts and stuff. You get a free t-shirt. You get a bunch of Motokazi um, decals. So there's just a ton of stuff you can do. And I think it's pretty cool. You know, get people to run, obviously, their stuff. And, you know, teach teach the kids how to, you know, be to be responsible, I guess. You know what I mean? I, I think it's a pretty good deal. I've been, I would... I am a repeat Team Motokazi member. I've done it a few years, and, you know, it's definitely worth the time. Take the time. Go on the website. Um, the application is right there. You can email it back to Jamie. It's super simple, and uh, it's just kind of fun to be uh, a member of the team. Yeah, yep. I printed one off. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's super easy. Just, you know, list some of the events that you went to, uh, what your goals are for 2014, um, your goals you know, outside of racing. So, yeah. And and good good luck making yours better than mine because I did mine in about, oh, eight minutes right before the show. So Whoa. Whoa. that's a challenge to everybody. I, I guess I have something to do tomorrow at work. Yeah, do it up. Blast, I should have waited and done it tomorrow at work. <laughs> would have made the day go by faster. And you would have gotten paid up. for it. I'll, I'll do another city. one. <laughs> so do maybe. mine tomorrow at work, then you can get paid for doing mine. Oh, I was getting paid for show prep. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, so go check those up, those guys out, and like like Jason said, you guys are already, you know, well, unless you're in sunny California. For people in Minnesota, that weather's was nice today. So hopefully, uh, what is like a month away is the first race, huh? Month and a half. Is that right? Uh, End usually of April for the first of April, isn't yeah, it? Or right around the beginning first. of April. Yep, that's yeah. the. That's the cancellation race, as I always call it, because nine times out of ten it gets canceled. But yep. So I mean, Is it again though, doesn't Grantsburg usually run? Well, I'm the sure. the one year I went to Grantsburg, they ran, and it was like <laughs> twenty nine degrees and snowing. Did you get beat by Caleb? No, I. You can ask Caleb about that race. I think I have oh. the world record for lapping him. I couldn't remember who lapped who. I, no. I knew one of you did. I'm pretty sure I lapped him four times. <laughs> <laughs> So he didn't go one lap? He didn't even make it a lap? I think he made it a lap. <laughs> <laughs> I just know every time I came around, it's like, oh, where is he going to be now? Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't think I'm ever going to go to that track. I just Oh, that was just a disaster. And I can't, you know, I can't talk about the track. That's the only time I've ever been there. But, man, it was so cold and so wet, and the track was just one nonstop 
Millville whoop section. It was just insane. Nice. No, not nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, so back to that other segment, motokazi.com. Check them yes, out. Yes, agreed. I just remember I went and watched my brother race at Grandsburg one year, and they used to have, and I haven't been there in probably, uh, probably since then, I just remember they had this tunnel that you would walk, you know, walk through to get to the other side, and then the track went up and over it. And I just remember these guys coming on, you know, this is back and they didn't have four strokes or whatever. It was, you know, everyone had a 125. And you just hear this thing coming, and you think he's just going to launch off this tunnel. And it's just like all sand. He hits that, the tunnel, and it's just like he barely makes it over the top. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. Yeah. Sand is no fun. I just wanted to remind you or tell you, Scotty, that you said sense, not since. Sense? So, <laughs> accent because Man. I'm picking it up all over the place now. You know, Ooh. since we were talking about Melville. <laughs> Melville. It was funny because while I was saying Melville there, I was thinking, don't say Melville. Don't say Melville. <laughs> and that's our show for tonight. <laughs> well it's been fun come on you poor sport alright should we check out uh, I don't know if you guys did or not today but the Racer X poll who will win the yeah. 250 Supercross East region mm, I think that's easy it's going to be a real disappointment if it's not a pro circuit Kawasaki yeah <laughs> I think that's probably mathematically impossible at this point isn't it um, I would guess so Bogle is 20, 22 oh, that, points down. That ain't too bad. Just need all three of them to not line up. <laughs> Super bad. So, well, obviously it's going to be one of two guys, right? I mean. Uh, well, Super bad's got 94 points. Davalos has 87 points. And then Baggett's got 79 points. So, but. So we're not talking too much, I guess. Well, I guess it could be anyone's really bag. It's just going to have to get on a tear, and I don't see that really happening. Him beating both of those two with any consistency is probably not going to happen. No, and I don't know. It's uh, uh. super bad. I'd have to real deal. I'd, I'd have to give it to super bad. Yeah, he seems to be doing well, but I still, sure. I'm still waiting for a rookie mistake, which. I mean, if it happens, I don't think anyone's going to be shocked because that's what happens to rookies. But if it doesn't happen, I don't think anyone's going to be shocked either because he's he's been hyped up so much. So it could go either way, I guess. Like I think his his rookie mistake was getting into the tough blocks at wherever he did that. In the heat race when he crashed twice? Yeah. Yeah. I would like to know what um, Davalos and Superbad's average starting position has been. Oh, it can't, one I, and two? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I've seen any of them start outside the top three. Baggett's the only one that's, have, you know, had bad starts. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting because I don't think Baggett is – he's got to be lighter than super bad. He's a pretty small dude. Super bad's pretty scrawny, you know, but he's, he's tall. So I, I would imagine he's in the, like, 145, 150 range. <laughs> and uh, Baggett can't be much more, but he's just been. I mean, it, you got to expect at some point he's going to get a bad start, isn't he? One of them, Davalos or Superbad? I don't know. I don't know if they can whole shot every one of them. Sooner, I it sooner or later, one of them is going to hit the gate or do something. Yeah, not get through the turn clean. I mean, it's coming, but yeah. I guess as far as lights goes, I'm. Uh, ugh. It's I don't know. To me, as a fan, is boring to watch. You know, like I'm ready for some. Uh, I'm ready for some Sealy Anderson. Drama. Well, I mean, we. I don't think you could expect uh, the East Coast to be quite as exciting as the West Coast, just because. When is the last time that we've actually seen the lights class be entertaining? All right. Yeah, I like it in, in outdoors way more because there's usually. Well, obviously, there's twice as many guys that are capable of winning. Yeah, outdoors, it's, so, it always seems like it's just kind of a crapshoot. I mean, 
Well, and those guys are just so, I mean, they're so much more intense, it seems like, outdoors. They just, they're just fierce out there, you know, and they're all over the place, riding wild and yeah. just fun. You see a lot of, you know, you see a lot more spectacular crashes out of them because they're just going for it, like, pretty much going balls out all the time. Yeah. And the 450 guys have mellowed it out quite a bit. This actually brings up a uh, subject that I wanted to talk about, and I know, Jeff, we both brought it up on Saturday night, but when are we going to stop calling the 250 class an, inter an introductory class? Why can't people accept the fact that it's just another racing class? It's not an introductory class. Well, that's... I yes, was, Bailey, I agree with you. Yeah, I don't know what the... I can't believe you guys can hear that. It blows my mind. But, um, Baxter. I barely heard it. You know I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so, yeah, I totally agree with you. And it was, it's like, I mean, they're going, they're putting up lap times that are sometimes faster, faster. than the other guys. Uh, oh, yeah! <laughs> I know uh, at, at Daytona, the, um, Superbad was the fastest qualifier, right? I think so. And he had faster times. Mm -hmm. And yet, I mean, the tracks are just as hard. I don't understand how you can call it a, uh, what do they call it, a feeder class or an intro, uh, introductory class. Or yeah, I, I just don't, I don't understand why it, why it takes somebody like us to accept the fact and say, hey, it's a class all its own. Why did the people, I mean, Emig was talking about it being an introductory class. It's like, what makes you think that? I understand it's somewhat of a stepping stone. I don't even like to call it that, but it is not an introductory class. To me, if somebody wanted to race that class for their whole career, let them do it. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, I'm totally with you, and I'm really, really sick and tired of, like, Steve Mathis and his bagging on Davalos because Davalos hasn't won a race in nine years. It's like there's, what, like 30 other guys out there that haven't won races either? Exactly. And you're holding it against this guy? I mean, yeah. sure you, he's you, had a lot of good races where he's kind of effed it up, you know, in the end, but... Yeah, I mean, you, ba you bag him because he hasn't won a race in nine years, but at the same time, you're giving Ronnie Stewart all the props in the world for making the main. I understand. I think that's awesome for Ronnie Stewart that he made the main and that he got psyched about it and was fired up. I think that's great, but... Why are you going to bag on Davalos for finally winning a race? I mean, the guy won heat races. Obviously, the guy can ride. So, Well, and I mean, he was sure he was in the position to win, but winning's not for everyone. I mean, you don't bag on every guy for not winning just because he's on equipment that's capable of winning. It drives me nuts that he has been so critical of the dude. And, I, I mean, it makes me, I feel bad for Davalos a little bit because he's like, obviously he's, Everyone says he's like one of the nicest guys in the world. Yeah, and I and I do too because you know. because there's so many people and I mean all of us are this way to a certain extent. Is that we're gonna take what Mathis or I don't know why we're using him as an example, but what whoever says about somebody, you know, that's gonna help form an opinion of them in your head. Uh -huh. So because everybody's talking crap about the guy, then you start to kind of lean that way. You know, so yeah, I feel bad about the guy too because, the, to me, he deserves all the respect in the world. Yeah, I mean, I think Mathis would say that the argument is that, you know, he spent seven of those nine years in the lights class or whatever on really good equipment, and he's he's had opportunities to win, but he didn't capitalize on them. And I, like I said, it's. There was someone better, you know. He doesn't bag on Reed for all the times Carmichael and Stewart whooped his ass. Yeah, you know? but at, but at the same time, it's not like the guy hasn't been trying. I mean, you know how many people there are in this sport at that level that are out there just collecting paychecks. You know, I mean, yeah. you can you can totally tell the guys that are out there doing that. Yeah. Davalos is not that guy to me. The guy has been trying, so I don't understand how you give him crap for doing what he's doing. Yeah. It's really frustrating to sit and listen to it and to read about it over and over again. Yeah. Whoa. Feel better, Jeff? Yeah. Well, I'm totally with Jason, too. I think if a guy's better at riding a 250 than a 450, let him ride it, you know? Yeah. Well, too, I don't think it takes anything away from the racing. Right. Now, too, don't they consider pro circuit, is that still considered a... Uh, uh, 
Like, is that a satellite team? Or well, I mean, it's the best team in the class, right? Right. So I, I... I'd say it's as good a ride as you could get, so therefore I would call it a factory ride. Yeah, I would not call it a satellite team by any means. I think the difference is you maybe don't collect a salary paycheck, or a factory paycheck, I mean. You know, your salary is going to be more, probably more incentive-based or performance-based. But I wonder if Pro Circuit collects that paycheck. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Um, uh, I opened up a can of worms. No, you're okay. You are okay. I kind of did it on purpose. Watch the GPs this weekend, Scott. Did you watch them? Uh, no, I did not. Were they any good? What? Yeah, I kind of screwed up on the 450 or the MXGP race because I caught the end of it and caught, found out who won before I even watched it. So, But Caroli went 1-1, Hurlings went 1-1, so it was kind of a KTM domination. <sighs> so I'm assuming you're going to see a lot more of that throughout the year, but... Speaking of that, I'm super pumped about uh, outdoors starting and Christoph Porcel supposedly riding the Nationals. Yeah. You're not a fan, Jason, <laughs> I am. I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Who's he riding for? Isn't but, he on a Yamaha? That's, o that's okay. More power. I, what's he on the Star Racing team? Uh, I hope uh, you're not asking me. He's got a 250 me. motocross only deal. With one of the Yamaha teams, but isn't there only one Yamaha team anymore? Oof. Or is it Valley? Is Valley doing outdoors only? I can't remember, but I'm sure someone will correct me. Maybe Matt. He knows everything. <laughs> Talk about him that way. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. I can't believe you you talk about the French man. <laughs> the French tickler. Why? Does he carry around a white flag with him? <laughs> I've never heard him surrender or seen him surrender. Do you think when he comes around last lap of the race, he sees the white flag and he's thinking, oh, that guy's my buddy. <laughs> um, Scott, do you want a Tums or something? God, I can't. I, gotta, I need a new mic. It's like I'm barely burping, and that thing picks everything up. Well, tell me about it. My dog's three doors down barking at someone, and you guys can hear it. <laughs> yeah, we'll rock this set up for a little bit, and then I'd like to get a, a different mic. It is nice being able to back away from it and sneeze and cough and turn it down. I, I want to see what you look like right now, Jason. I, I picture you looking like, uh, like uh, Tom Bernard or something, yeah. sitting there in your underwear with a... Picture microphone in front of you. Picture WKRP in Cincinnati. That's what I'm rocking right now. I got the shades on and the whole works. You got the shades on right you, now? Of course I do. Damn. My pic my picture on Twitter is what I look like right now. Sweet. Um I forgot who I think it was Owen on Twitter. Uh sent me something he said it the races don't start till like 11 30 or something saturday what yeah so maybe they're not live they're just that would be delayed or detroit they got to be what an hour they only an hour ahead of us would that make sense something with nascar oh freaking nascar really I'm not. I'm not sure. I could have uh, misleading information there, but that's. I haven't looked yet. I guess I assumed that they were live. Live. We should call the Pulp MX show some night from our podcast. It's possible that it's Detroit, and that you know things are just so crappy they just can't get the signal out. They have to record it and drive it somewhere. Aww. That's not nice. What? That is not nice. Dude, it's Detroit. Come on. Uh, what else you boys got? I oh, stuff things. I thought that Stewart's header pipe um, got ripped off, but no, it never actually came off. What, what? something flew off? Yeah, but something wasn't... fell off. That's what I thought it was. That's... I think that was. I think that was part of Alessi's bike. Mm. It could have been. That could have been his. Uh... 
clutch lever or whatever side of the bike Stewart hit. It's possible. That's why I brought up the thing with um, with Reed riding without his header pipe because that's what I thought it did. I thought it it hit it and it ripped it off. I'm like, well, shit, that thing should run with uh, with no header pipe. But what do I know? Oh, not a whole lot, obviously. Deep deep in my notes. What did you guys think of Ken Roxon? In a few of his passes. Ian J. Mm. Kind of trying to figure out what you were yapping about on Twitter. Yeah, I think he's... I thought they were kind of... Uh, I don't know. I guess i seen him do it at least twice where they come across that start and it was almost like he starts on the right side and like, especially on that one on Dungey, it was like Dungey was coming up on the inside of him and he just kept pushing him pushing them right off the track i don't know i just maybe it's not that big a deal but to me it I was like man you're you're kind of being a little prick there you know but i think you're so, eating too much into it yeah i mean i saw the one on dean wilson and i think the reason for that one it was in that same section where he went from the right side all the way across to the left but if the lap before that he it looked like he had the pass made and then him and Dean kind of popped into the same rut at the same time, and Dean kind of popped him out of it, and he lost the spot. So I don't think he wanted to let Dean have the inside after that straightaway. So I feel like he went from the far right to the far left trying to get into that inside rut before Dean could. It didn't look – I mean, obviously he did come right across, but <laughs> they weren't close enough to – they obviously didn't hit. So oh. I don't think Roxon even knows how to take anyone out. I, I think he's that not dirty. I mean, we see so, him try to stuff Barsha, and all he could do is like spin his rear wheel into Barsha, and Barsha didn't even flinch. I think Roxon is so clean he craps white. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> your brother, man. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, what does he say? Yes, first moto was perfect. I think we're back to the mill. Mill. <laughs> I'm just going to quit saying it. Now it's going to be with you forever. I know. You guys are... <laughs> All right. Spring Creek Motocross Park in 2006. First motos were awesome. April 6th, according to Matt, was the date. Yes, first moto was perfect. And he says, just in case you guys are wondering, Chad Reed is having another child. Not literally, but his wife is. Oh, that's good. Oh, and it was Valley Motorsports. And it was Valley Motorsports. So, what? So they're gonna have their third baby? Uh, Cause they got two, right? Maybe I guess. I really need to become better friends with Chad Reed. That's all there is to it. I agree. All right. So you guys think the rocks and driving people off the track is not a big deal? No, no big deal. Next. No, it's absolutely not a big deal. Next topic. <laughs> What the hell was that? That was me trying to tear the paper. Oh. I thought it just got really windy in there. Oh. I thought you broke wind. <laughs> you caught me a little bit off guard here, guys. <laughs> that's, an, that's an aggressive booing. Yeah. It just it's goes long, on and on and on. It's the longest friggin' boo ever. Um... All right, so the Minnesota boys, Martin made the main event, which is good, huh? Like he got yeah. he got sixth. It's pretty terrible that we're like highlighting that as a as a, a an accomplishment when he should be at the front of this championship. Yeah, you know well, what I mean? or what we thought was good, I guess where he thought we we thought he would be, or I did anyway. I think he had some very, or people had some very high expectations of him. I'm not sure that it was necessarily warranted. I mean, I expected him to do better, but I don't know. That's my backpedal, 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 backpedal. <laughs> I think I think missing the first one, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, it happens, right? Or something happens. I guess to miss the second one, it's like, ah, come on. But... Well, it's just 
seems like some guys have a black cloud at times over them that just they cannot escape. Like, obviously, Stewart's had some really bad luck recently, and Jeremy's had some really bad luck two weeks in a row. But that's the way it goes in that class. You don't get that extra opportunity in the you know with like a semi race. So you got to make it happen. And generally speaking, top nine is you know for someone of Jeremy's caliber would be no problem, even with a you know a couple mishaps or whatever. But right. Then, it's been a little tough road for him, and I, uh, I wonder. I kind of wonder. I don't know, obviously, but I wonder if he's over it and ready for outdoors, ready for a fresh start. Uh, I mean, I, I would have to assume he can't. I mean, there's really nothing you can do about it now. You know, just on to the next one, and yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd hope not. But he finished seventh, I think, in the main. Uh, Is that right? Sixth. Sixth. Okay. Yep. Um, so I know Jesse, they didn't make the main, but I know they made the night show. Jesse did, Zach did, um, Justin Kraft, he made it, but none of those yeah, guys. Yeah, Nadette made it. Yeah, he made the main, right? I think Adet probably made the main. I'm, I'm not positive. I have no proof of that, but um, my gut tells me he probably did. Oh, I, I mean, I complete well... I forgot about Olenberg. He got 15th. Yeah. I did not see Audette in the listings. Maybe he didn't, but... I just, I still can't really get over the fact that we have so many good riders out there that are from around here. It just blows me away that a place that has winter all the damn time, and I think it really is... It just goes to show you that our tracks here and the quality of competition is, is a lot better than it is a lot of places in the country. I think that's what it is more than anything right now. You know, just being um, our experience with Texas and seeing what that scene is kind of like as compared to ours, I think it's the competition around here that's that's kind of making up for our lack of season. Yeah. Well, and you got to think that, I mean, overall, I think Minnesota wasn't hit as hard, so a lot of our guys kept in it and were able to go through the econ- the tough economy and keep at it, so that helps. A lot of them moved out of here, though, I guess. I mean, that's what the ones that had the ability got out of here for the winters and probably stayed here in the summer. But Yeah, the smart ones. <laughs> yeah, but still impressive. What They said we had four Minnesotans in the top 20 a couple races ago, and, I mean, we got a lot of local people that were watching every race. It's hard to watch the the top guys and our guys at the same time. You almost got to pause it or, you know, you miss a lot of the race because you're looking at the results trying to watch your guys climb yeah. up the up the positions. Yep, yep. What else you got, Jason? Well, um, just I want to throw in a personal congratulations to Jesse Wentland. Um I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal exactly what the deal is, so I'm not going to. But uh, anyway, picked up a ride for the Canadian Nationals, and uh, hell yeah, buddy. That's what you went with for a clap? Yeah, I don't have the other one up right now. <laughs> if I was going to play a sound effect for him, it was going to be this one. I don't think that was appropriate. That goes along with the congratulations. No. <laughs> yeah, that was not a good one. No, exactly. Poor timing on my part. I was not expecting Scott to throw it my way. I was just seeing. I think we've kind of gone over all my little uh, notes already. Well, I got one other thing we can yak about here a little bit. Let's hear it. Uh, some of you probably have noticed we've kind of, I don't know if we call it a team-up or... What we what we're gonna call it, but uh, uh, Hardline MX MX Matt has uh, jumped on board as a backer of our show, and we were definitely gonna back his uh, website and of course his photography and his videos. The guy's amazing at all that. Um, but he tried something new this week. He did a what do you call it, a video block pass. He used to write um, a segment called Block Pass on his website. This week he did. Uh, a video block pass, and uh, it was pretty good. I got to give uh, props to Matt for that. I'm probably the only one that watched it, so um, 
well, talking to you guys them. about it was probably uh, pointless, but <laughs> probably pointless. That's not nice. What do you mean it's not nice? Because I actually, you know, research our people and. Was a damn cricket in cricket my house again? There's about a hundred in my house. Sorry, man. Oh. I tried. I tried really. I gotta be honest, you guys. Um, I've kind of gotten hooked on Mad Skills Motocross, so. Oh. I saw that coming. I'm probably gonna need an intervention at some point. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure my boss loves it that I spend most of the day playing with my phone. You want to do that? All right. All right. Let me see. Let's pull out. Jason, do you have a smartphone? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You'll have to down. Do you have it downloaded? <laughs> yes, I do. Do you have a smartphone? <laughs> Is that even a real question? Oh, I wish I could swear right now. <laughs> Not everybody has a smartphone. What? What? Uh, what's your take on uh, this round's tracks? Do you guys what, like rock and hard place? Yeah. Um, I like them. They're good. I think they're retarded. Do you suck at them? Um. Whoa! Do we have to use that term? All right. You know, I don't get the jam. Can you pick who you race against in the jam, or do you just have to race random people? Hang on a second. I want to see where you're at. I don't hang, even hang on. know what the point is, but hang on, guys. I gotta, I gotta make this right. I feel really bad right now. Jesse Wentland. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. Listen here. MX Matt. Oh yeah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> feel better now. I like how Josh Hill's name is Queef Latifa seventy five. Are I'm we Mad really playing Mad Skills Motocross on our podcast? Seriously, I got the I... sixth fastest time. You're sitting at eighteenth, buddy. So you just what are you talking you about? You just hush your mouth. In which one? Uh, let's see. Hard place. I have the sixth right. fastest on my. Fr- yes, we are talking about this. I think it's. I think it's about time to take this on. <laughs> This I'm in 12th, buddy. I don't know what you're talking about. But you are fast, I want to. I'm going to personally apologize to the listeners right now. <laughs> well, this is happening for real. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I don't think this round of tracks is really that good for anyone out there that is playing Mad Skills Motocross too. All right, we can continue. Good enough. I got nothing, man. I'm kind of. Kind of tapped out. No. Y'all, y'all tired out from playing Mad Skills Motocross? Yeah, dude, my thumbs hurt. I got like, you know, I, for some reason I feel like if I push the buttons harder, my bike will go faster. You just got to I honestly, everything. I still can't play it, so. You haven't figured it out yet? No, no, no. My hands don't work well enough. Oh. Do you even have a smartphone? Yes. Crickets. Unbelievable. Unbefriend believable. Do you even know how to drive an automatic? No. Oh my god, I just rocked that rhythm section, you guys. This is why I'm over. <laughs> That's why you're not paying attention. <laughs> I can I can hear the Chad Sparks comment of this right now. I don't know what that is. Okay. Someone knows what that is. Chad Chad knows what that is. <laughs> All right, boys. Um, I think that's it. I got nothing. Just got nothing. Jason, do you have anything? Um, let's see. File import audio. Oh no. That's the last. That is the last thing on my notes. <laughs> we can just remind everybody again about the Motokazi preseason sale. It's going on now. Through March 21st. Save yourself some money. You know what? And and don't forget to get your app in for uh, Team Motokazi. The one track, honestly, that I miss riding the most, and maybe it's because I haven't had too spectacular of a crash there, is, is Mankato. I like Mankato a lot, and I've been there, I think I've only been there like three times, but... 
Like, the only problem I have with it is that the last time I raced there, it was super sunny, and, like, the shadows in the trees just kind of jacked with my mind a little bit. You get a lot of, like, that yeah, light I spots. I trees. From, well, it's, it's the leaves in the trees, but when it's overcast, <laughs> at least you can see the dirt, but when it's super sunny, you get all the shadows of the sun going through the trees, and you get all the light spots and dark spots, and I couldn't see the bumps and stuff, so. See the last last time I was there, I think they got a bunch of rain maybe the night before, and uh, so it's they cut that huge straightaway out from the back, which helped me out quite a bit. But uh, I always like that section when you're when you're up on top, you make that left hand corner. It was kind of like a big banks kind of sand turn. Oh yeah, I know which one you're talking about. That's an awesome corner. Yeah, it's like you hit that thing and then you jump down the hill and then you just, you know, I always had a 250F, so you just hammer the throttle on that one and then you rail that corner and then you climb back up the hill. That's that's the funnest that's the funnest one for me. Well, that's the whole fun of that whole track is just rip it up and down the hills. It was probably a little more fun on my 252 stroke than my 254 stroke, but it's an unbelievable time on a 450. Yeah, I can I can believe that. I bar this is embarrassing. I borrowed uh, my buddy Greg's 450 one time. I think mine was blown up or something. So I was on his bike and uh, Zach that we had on a couple weeks ago. He passed me going up one of those uphills on a 125. <laughs> Were you in neutral? <laughs> I, I may I may have been going backwards. <laughs> So. He was, he was first gear pined. <laughs> uh, shoot! All right, guys. Well, that's it. Um, let's thank everyone. You know that's helping us out. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just a little ovation to everybody for all the thank you. You know for helping us out. Booze. All right. So thanks to MB1, <laughs> Fine Tune Motorsports, Motokazi, Hardline MX, Minnesota District 23, Spring Creek MX Park, the Bicycle Works, the Dam Bait Shop, the Open Mic Podcast, Team J Law, and SKD. Yeah. Thanks, SKD. I know. I'll get you guys your little care packages. We got t shirts and stickers coming. I'm still waiting by the mailbox. I know. It's getting warmer out. Yeah. My shoes are wet, though. Makes waiting a lot better. <laughs> and I'm getting hungry. I need a smaller T-shirt now. <laughs> Jeez. All right, guys. Thanks. We should be back next week, next Monday, 7. We'll keep the Certainly. live thing going. Certainly hope so. Sweet. All right, we'll catch Stay you guys next week. Stay classy, y'all. Wait, wait for it.